Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. So it's been quite a while since I've recorded a show. Um, the actual last recording was uh, the 400th episode over at Pedernalis. Uh, saw all my friends over there. It was an uh, awesome time to uh, hang out with, with uh, Julie and David um, to celebrate uh, the 400th episode. Um, so I'm back on the set, I got everything set up. I've got some new things going on here. Um, so I want to get my notes up here since everything is working, it looks like. A uh, few things just to kind of get into everything. Uh, so I rarely ever come up with the title of my episode before I do it, but this episode I'm gonna kind of call Core of the Matter. Um, the too long didn't watch version um, is that, uh, I don't know, what was I gonna say? <laughs> the too long didn't watch version is, um, this really isn't going to be a review so much of, of the Corvin cap because I, I tasted this wine, uh, a few months ago, um, at the, I think the five month mark and I had recorded an episode, uh, and the wine was definitely not as fresh as it should be. It, the cap works. It goes to its design limit of three months with, with pretty much no problem. Um, at three months, it was slightly less fresh than a fresh bottle. So it works. Um, but I decided to the uh, design limit to see how long we go. We're gonna get to that in a little bit because I haven't tasted it since then. Uh, this episode was supposed to be, um, uh, anyway, so the Too Long Didn't Watch version, the TL semicolon DW, um, is that uh, got a lot of stuff going on in my personal life um, and it's going to affect the show somewhat. You can't see it, but I have a ton of wine over here. I'm going to record, I don't even know how many episodes right now, seven, eight, something like that in one sitting uh, to get ahead of the game. Uh, but I, and I don't talk about my personal life. I mean, I do, but I don't. Certain things I don't talk about. So um, uh, I will be having a heart operation fairly soon. Okay, so it's not open heart, not like, like you know, not transplant or anything, but there, uh, I do have a heart surgery coming up. I'll talk about that a little bit more, but, um, yeah, so the too long didn't watch version of that is that's what's going on. All right. So, um, so it means I'll be out of commission. I can't really record anything for, I don't know, four, six, eight weeks ish. So I'm recording a bunch. All right. So this was supposed to be the San Antonio cocktail conference, um, episode and like this episode is really more like an update of a lot of stuff that's why i'm doing this because i don't want to put a regular wine review um against all this other stuff so you know if you want to watch the wine review then next week or if i i'm not gonna i don't know if i'm doing two in a, two a week yet like i had talked about but if nothing else next week will be in a real wine review so um <clears throat> but anyway so south santo cocktail conference Brief recap, it was a great conference. I've gone for it four years in a row now. I think um, this year was the seventh year, eighth year, ninth year, somewhere around that. I, I didn't look it up. Um, so the first year I went was I think the third or fourth year. Um, and you can tell over the past you know four years, things have gotten better. Uh, execution has gotten better. Um, the venues have, have, have well, the venues have improved in certain aspects. You know, they've they've changed some venues here and there. I think they're just they're just getting they're getting it right. Um, the night I did a lot of nighttime events, uh, the daytime events or or seminars. I didn't go to a whole lot. I didn't go to near as many as I'd planned on. Um, but I wasn't really signed up for any of them. That was one of those. I just show up, and if there's room, I get to go in. I did get to go to a few of the uh, seminars, and they were really interesting. But um, I, I really concentrated on the nighttime stuff. Uh, the uh, opening night at the Duseum was fantastic. Um, it was better than the first time I went, which was kind of like, ah, it's all right. So um, anyway, 
uh, the Tasting Sweets, another highlight of, uh, of the night or of, of the uh, event, <clears throat> says during the day, last year's Tasting Sweets really were a disaster. I mean, no, no, uh, no other way to describe it was a disaster. It wasn't necessarily any one particular group's fault. Uh, the the uh, hotel that they were doing all that in was had construction going on. The elevators weren't like the best. I think there's only two elevators, and they were like not letting people use the stairs for a while till someone kind of pointed out that you can't do that. Um, I didn't point it out, but I know someone who did. Um, <clears throat> and it was just you know they're on all these different floors, and it was great idea, but it was just hard to execute. Whereas this past year, um, I was at the San Anthony, San Anthony Hotel. Um, the majority of the tasting suites um, were on the first floor in the ballroom and other other meeting rooms, and then, which was basically the same area they did the uh, the stroll on Waldorf, not the stroll, but the Waldorf on on the prairie. Um, and then they had a few other select tasting rooms on some other floors. So it wasn't so much of a traffic jam to go up and down elevators. And they had a lot of rooms on each floor instead of like one room per floor. So much better execution this year. But uh, the reason I didn't do really a video recap, a couple things. One, it's so long after the conference that I kind of felt that any recap would just been, I don't know, a little late. But two, I watched some of those videos of me at these events at night and I was not comfortable putting the videos on considering I was pretty toasted. I didn't drive anywhere, so I took total advantage of it. At the time, I didn't think I was really that drunk, but watching the videos, I definitely was, definitely was inebriated, a little more than I'm comfortable putting on video. Um, I had some friends that were in the background or next to me, and I, I while I probably said, do I have your permission to be on video? Um, and they said, yes, they were drunk. Um, and so I never really kind of cleared it with them again and say, hey, can I put your face on video? Um, so, and, I, and basically I didn't really have a lot of video that was usable. So that's why I didn't do it. All right, uh, back to my health. So I have a heart murmur, okay? Most people have heart murmurs, no big deal. Uh, mine was discovered last year. Um, I didn't have it as a kid. Nobody, it was never been discovered, okay? And it wasn't like I just finally went to a doctor last year. I mean, I had, I've had a regular physician for a few years now, so it's never come up in a checkup. It came up, um, you know, did the deal, sat down with the cardiologist. He's like, yeah, you'll probably have to have an operation at some point in the future in your life. Cool. This year, we have another checkup. He's like, I want to do another procedure, get a better look. We've decided that I need an operation sooner rather than later. So that's going to happen here really soon. I don't know the exact date of this episode, but it should be in a few days. And uh, my very first procedure, if that's the case, my first procedure to for pre-op, I guess, is this particular week. And I have two of those procedures, one week after the other. I'll have the operation, I'm going to guess, within a week or two after that. We didn't, I didn't get an exact date, um, but I will be doing it here in San Antonio. Um, I'll be in the hospital for a few days, and then I have a four to six week recovery period. What does that mean as far as everything else for the summer? Uh, well, right before I went on a hiatus for to do studies, um, or right before all that was figured out, I decided I was going to take a hiatus for studying for TechSOM because I signed up for not just volunteering, which is what I do every year. This would be year nine for me, by the way, in a row, um, but uh, plan to do the Texom Best Sommelier competition, and uh, this would be the third time I would compete, um, and this would be kind of a, a for real com competition. Two years ago, kind of for real, but I didn't take it too seriously, or as serious as I should have. The very first time, which was four years ago, um, I really was just like, hey, I, hey, I got accepted. I'm just doing this to figure out what in the world's going on, get a preview of the advanced exam, because that's kind of how the competition's designed. It's not a straight up advanced exam, but it's based on it, and there's gonna, they're gonna throw you some, through some you know, little hoops here that may not be in an exam situation, because it is a competition. Um, I've done it twice now. I felt really comfortable in general last time, even though I was not prepared as much as I should have been theory-wise. I felt that this year I could really, uh, you know, do some some good uh, studying. Um, you know, I'm just I'm that much better than I was two years ago with my knowledge. And if I just really hunker down on some flashcards, I think I would be I would do well. The idea was I felt that I could get at least first, second, or third place because the only reason to do it at this point is to get the money. 
um, not to put myself through the stress of like going through a competition and doing an advanced exam. I've done it twice. I've got it. I mean, I've got the idea. Um, so anyway, both of those are in jeopardy of me not being able to do them. Basically volunteer, not happening. And that's really just because uh, even if I get the operation like within a couple weeks from now or three weeks from now uh, and the recovery is really quick and I do great, uh, I won't have the personal time off to be able to go for an entire week like I normally do. Um, but I could still potentially take four days off, uh, manipulate my days off at work because, you know, I, we're open seven days a week. So it's not, you know, it's a little bit different than the quote nine to five Monday through Friday world. Um, and I could still, still potentially do it. First of all, I need to know when my operation is actually going to be and what type of operation we're going to have and as far as like what my recovery is going to be. And honestly, I just still need to have a little soul searching to decide whether or not I really want to go through that, uh, go through the stress, um, go through the hassle of making the trip up there uh, and now all that it entails at Texom. I mean, I've gone there eight other years and I know what it's like. So you know what? Maybe I decide it's just not worth it right now or right at that point because while I might be recovered enough to make the trip because I would be back to work at that point, um, it may not be the best interest for me to go up there for four days. I mean, the first night I wouldn't really have anything going on because I would want to be fresh for the next day, which is the competition. But once the competition is over and I wouldn't have any volunteer uh, obligations, then, you know, it's kind of all bets are off for two nights and then drive back the next, you know, drive back the fourth night, fourth day. So I might, it might be more of a push myself a little too hard. So I'm a 50, 50 on actually doing the competition. So any of you that are from Texom, uh, that have now watched all this now of all and, and anyone else is like, oh, what's going on? I will definitely let you know 100% for sure on both things. But as far as the volunteer thing, I haven't said anything to anybody, at least at Texom. Um, I highly doubt I'll be able to do it. The only reason I would even be able to do it is if when they did all these little procedures, they go, oh, well, we can't do the, we can't do the uh, surgery until like September. But the initial meeting with my cardiologist is like, yeah, I have nothing planned for the whole year other than going to a seminar in August. He goes, oh, you might be able to do that. So I'm pretty sure he's thinking operation before the conference and then I would still have time to go. But he, I didn't tell him exactly what the conference was and what it entails. All right. Um, with all that said, um, I don't normally talk about the donate button over there this early. It should be pretty obvious. If you want to donate, cool. If not, not a big deal. Um, I think I give good value, for, value for value. Um, <clears throat> study. So I've talked about the study program. So I will have nothing better to do but study. And even if I don't compete, it's just going to be a great, you know, just a great, you know, kick in the kick in the rear for studying. I mean, I've been studying fairly okay the past couple weeks, but you know, it'll be nothing better to do. All right. Uh, equipment and setup. So man, I did a bunch of upgrades <coughs> a couple months ago. Um, I'm totally LED now. Uh, everything. These lights are LED and they're not, so not like super hot. Like I can, you know, I'm not going to touch the glass with it, but you know, not like I've got my regular lights I have, but now I have a new center light and that's my phone. I have both cameras going. So I've got the phone. I'm, I'm basically now for real testing the mobile setup, but I've got the real camera because well, as I did at the Peternalis, I used this setup as far as two cameras, but I was outside and I had an awesome, wonderful lens flare on the phone because I didn't have a lens hood and that caused me to really, really try to find a way to do lens hoods on mobile devices, which don't exist. Um, but there's a way to do it. Um, I'm just waiting for everything to come together, but honestly, I don't need it right now because when's the next time I'm going to be outside filming with the phone? But um, anyway, uh, I've got a new uh, audio recorder. It's the Zoom H6. Um, definitely a pricey piece of equipment and obviously way more than I need for just me. But when I have two to three people on the show, the old Zoom H1N unfortunately isn't really good enough. It's great for one person, but it's not really good for, for more than one person because you can't individually mix. And since I'm a very loud talking person naturally, uh, and other people aren't necessarily as loud as I am, I tend to drown them out and the audio really gets messed up in these interviews. Um, I really wish I had done this before Burgundy, but 
you know, as it is, I didn't. Um, but this will give me the ability, um, as of right now, to have three guests on, which is the maximum I've ever had. And if I know well in advance, I'm going to have, for some reason, have five guests on, which would be really crazy. Uh, I would need to buy some more lavaliers because I, I, bought, I bought new lavaliers. I mean, I upgraded. Like, this is not the cheapo 99 cent lavalier now. Um, this is like, you know, the super upgraded one. Uh, got the carrying case for the Zoom. Uh, but it comes with, you know, it comes with dead cats. Uh, this would be awesome when I was at, uh, whatchamacallit, at Santo Cocktail Conference because, well, you know, and also at Pedernal's because there was wind noise too. And that would have totally helped with that. Um, what else? I'm using Filmic Pro on the phone. I did do some tests just in the house using 4K on the phone. Not that I would be uploading to 4K on YouTube because there's not really a need for it, but I was going to do that and then downsample to 1080p to have like really high quality and then downsample because you tend to have good quality, but the file sizes are ridiculous. Um, so again, if I was going to do this out in the field, 1080p is what I normally shoot in with the regular camera. So I'm doing it with the iPhone now. And so this is a really first true test of that. Um, talk about, oh, other equipment. Yeah. So I got all this, got that. Um, there's not much else. I mean, there's going to be some other stuff that I may have bought or I will buy in the future for, you know, another overseas or even domestic trip where I'm not driving. Um, but I don't anticipate doing that for at least two years because if everything goes well, um, I will take the, uh, exam advanced exam next year and that'll be as much money as I can spend between that and Texom because it's expensive anyway. All right. Uh, and the most exciting thing, I got a real wine cellar, 172 bottle olive, olivino. Um, it's a dual zone, which I didn't really care if I had dual zone or not, but it's kind of cool I got it. And I have it almost filled with all the stuff I had in a cloud cellar of some sort. Um, so I've had the cellar now for a couple months. It's been rock solid. Um, my old cellar, I still have, um, a friend of mine is going to buy it from me. Uh, and that's been rock solid with 36 bottles. But the reason I bought it, um, besides that I had the money peak from all my refunds though, of course, hindsight, the operation would have been better off not spending all that money. Um, anyway, the, uh, I was messing around, you know, moving wine around and I broke, unfortunately. Um, and I need to send an email now to uh, these, these ladies. Um, that I broke a bottle of review Don Melchor, not the one I reviewed before, but a new bottle and I broke it and it was the only bottle I've ever broken out of that cellar. And it was heartbreaking. I would rather have broken the one I had already had. I mean, I still had it and I hadn't cracked it open since the Corvin episode. Um, and I haven't told them anything yet cause I really don't, I mean, if they send me a replacement, that's cool, but I don't really expect them to. I mean, they, they send me a ton of wine, which I'm about to review here over the next you know, couple hours. All right. So, um, let's get into the Corvin and let's open up the Filmic Pro remote and see how it's going over there. All right. It's still running. And I, so the iPad, I can see what's going on and it's really cool, but I needed my notes. So I'm not even going to Corvin it. I'm just going to, and there was not even any, any air. So this is the Gruner. I'm sorry. This is the, um, Franz Etz. Uh, 2015 Gruner Veltliner um, from Austria, and I totally anticipate this to be completely flat. Smells okay though. <laughs> it's totally drinkable. Well, I totally drinkable, but it's drinkable um, compared to what it tasted like on the very first opening and all these sub -sub subsequent uh, fresh bottles. Um, it's definitely lower acid, um, but the acid is still okay. Um, it's, it's not oxidized. Um, it doesn't taste bad. I was totally expecting like a really bad wine at this point. Um, and this is May freaking 9th. And I think I did the actual review in like mid or late September. So October, November, December, January, February, March, April, you know, seven plus months, almost eight months. And 
if I just gave this to someone to drink to be like, okay, yeah, this is fine. I'm impressed. So way beyond the design limits of what they intended three months. That was about, you know, you can totally, you know, totally, but you can kind of tell that it was losing its acidity. Uh, and this was, I think, really a great wine to try that with. So, it is totally drinkable. I mean, I might just finish that off tonight. I'm going to put it over there. All right. So, that's going to do it for this episode. As always, click the... Oh. So, I haven't been on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram because I'm supposed to study. So, uh, the only things you'll ever see is me posting videos for a while. All right. Uh, okay, let me mention that. All right, as, as, as always, click the links above to friend me up, though I'm not necessarily going to reply to those friend me ups um, until like a few months from now. Uh, but you can always do it, and eventually I'll say yes and all that. Uh, click the links below um, for, I don't know, I don't know how many links, I guess. I'll put a link to like maybe some equipment I bought, you know, and if I remember to do that in the Alavino, uh, and the donate button. Normally I ask you to do that because I'm trying to make up for wines or, or um, uh, travel. But in light of everything else, that would be nice. Again, I'm not begging you for money. If you want to donate, that's cool. I'm not trying to tear in your heartstrings. And that, that was not a pun. Um, but the core of the matter, core of in, your core is your heart. And you got to the core of the matter of what's going on. That's why I named it the way I did. Um, anyway, thank you all for stopping by and sitting down with me for 21 minutes plus, and uh, we'll see everyone really soon with an actual wine review.